Welcome back. Let's try to finish up this pace 1125 here. Um, this is the fifth pace and we are going to work at, look at pages 18 and 19 today, fractional equations. And uh, give us a couple examples here on page 18. And you'll notice, of course, the first one, they just have numbers. That's easy. You get the least common denominator, which in this case is 24. And then they show you how you multiply both sides of the equation by that and see what cancels out. <clears throat> that one's pretty easy. Uh, the one to the right, that one's not too bad either. You can see the A times the quantity A minus 1, multiply both sides. Yeah, works out pretty easy. And then the third example is a little more complex, B plus 5, and we have b squared minus 25. Now recognize that that can be factored to b plus 5 and b minus 5. And uh, then that's what the term on the right is as well. So really we only have two factors, b plus 5 and b minus 5. And we multiply both of those factors times both sides of the equation and then see what cancels out and then multiply together whatever's left. Um, so several of these, and they only have eight problems, and, and several of these I think you'll find are really not too bad. I wanted to talk about number seven though, because if I was looking at this page and anticipating which one, a student would probably think, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I would not try to even do it in the little bit of space that they have there on page 19. I think we're gonna need a whole piece of paper, okay? So let's dive in. Let me see if my green marker here will work well enough. Now I'm going to use black. All right. So looking at this, I notice that I'm going to have to use all three of these denominators, all three of these factors in my least common denominator and multiply through. Here's the shortcut that I like to do when I'm doing these types of things. I just put a square bracket around the whole equation, and then I'm just going to list all three. 3 minus 5, a minus 2, a minus 3. It's kind of like putting all that over 1. Okay, now imagine multiplying that times just this first term. The 3 minus 5 would cancel the 3a minus 5. So what would I have left? 9, and then parentheses, a minus 2, a minus 3. Whoa, all right minus 2. Now here, what cancels? The a minus 2 cancels, but I'm still left with 3a minus 5 and a minus 3 equals. Now the a minus 3 cancels out, and so now I have the quantity 3a minus 5 and a minus 2. Now that is pretty long, and we have just begun. So there's a lot more fun to go here. So let's take just this part and do the FOIL method. So the FOIL would give me a squared at the end, I'm gonna have plus six. In the middle, what do we have, or the outer? Negative three a and negative two a. And so negative three a, negative two a, negative five a. Okay, keep the 9 in front, minus 2, now we'll do the FOIL method here, 3a squared. The last term is going to be plus 15, okay, positive, or negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. And then let's see what happens in the middle. Negative 3 times 3 would be negative 9a and then negative 5a, so negative 14a. A, get it? If you're from Canada. No. All right, here we go. FOIL method over here. 3a squared, the last term is gonna be plus 10, and then in the middle, let's see what happens. Negative 6a, negative 5a, so negative 11a. All right. Actually, that part's fairly easy. You've been doing this since Algebra 1. You know how to do the FOIL method. Now we have to distribute the 9 times all of these. Then distribute negative 2 
This is where you gotta be careful. I actually like to change it and make it a negative two. So distribute the negative two times each of these three terms, which is gonna change this to positive, change this to negative 30, okay? And then we already have this done. And then basically you're trying to get everything down to just one term. Um, or you know, one a squared, you've got three of them here, so you gotta combine those, combine all the a's, and uh, get it down to one final equation. <clears throat> Let's see what the final form is here. Um, it looks like, wow, you can actually solve it all the way down to, it looks like the squared terms should end up canceling out. Nice. And so you'll just have something A equals something. And so then that last step is very easy to just solve for A. So you'll end up with one fraction as your final answer once you solve this whole thing out. So a lot of steps. Like I said, it's going to take up a lot of room as you take that to its completion. But uh, the concept itself is not too hard to see. And uh, this is just the longest one of all of them. So I thought I'd get you started on that one. And uh, just a few on that page. Hopefully it doesn't take you too long. And then we'll move on.